Hi, Greyhounds. I'm back with this part two and the last part of Words with Wings. So remember, it's a novel in verse, just like Garvey's Choice is. I hope you enjoyed that one, and I hope you're enjoying this one. I'd love to hear from you when I get done. So we're right in the middle. And remember, her teacher just talked to her about how he was a little sad and disappointed that she's totally quit her daydreaming. He said, you just need to learn when to do it. Like, don't do it in the middle of my lesson. But actually, he even, you know, he said all the great inventors and thinkers were daydreamers. And he even brought up the Wright brothers who um, had the first successful flight of an airplane in North Carolina, Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. And what if they weren't dream daydreamers? We would never have an airplane. So maybe he can get through to her. Maybe not. The next page is macaroni memory. In the lunch line, I take a deep, happy breath and unlock the drawer in my mind where I'd been stuffing all my daydreams. You can come out now. I whisper and throw away the key, but before I know it, the word macaroni on the lunch menu sends me to daddy's kitchen. He pours pasta into a pot of ice cream water and I, cold water and I sigh. What? He asks. You're supposed to boil the water first, I tell him. He smacks himself on the head, switches off the stove and says, grab your jacket. It's pizza time. I'm the first one out the door. Oh my goodness. So she just has that memory of her dad who also daydreams. Maybe she's going to let her daydreams in a little bit. Just has to figure out when to do it. Spring. Say spring and I am bouncing on the balls of my feet in a field of wildflowers while April showers tickle me till I'm slippery as a snake and soak straight through. Butterfly. Say butterfly and I'm swimming in sunshine, sprawled in the grass, blowing on a blade to make it whistle and eyeing the sky for small fluttery things wearing rainbow wings. She's letting those daydreams in, isn't she? Carousel. Carousel is another name for merry-go-round. Say carousel and pale po painted ponies gallop past. I reach for the reins of one and swing up into the saddle and race, standing still, wind whipping my braids as I fly. Roller coaster. Say roller coaster and I squeeze my eyes tight, dig my fingers into the safety bar as we climb six stories, then speed down again faster than my dreams can carry. And as soon as we reach the end of the ride, I'm the first to yell, do it again, do it again. Willow. There's this one kid, David, plants himself in the back of the room, hair hanging over his desk like a willow. He talks even less than me and I, I wonder why. Hmm, so she's noticed someone else, David. Hmm. Closer. One day I head in his direction. Pretend I need to sharpen my pencil. I manage to drop it right next to his desk, an excuse to bend down and study him up close. He hardly notices me. He's too busy drawing something in his notebook. Then as I'm about to grab my pencil and go, his head pops up. Hi, he says. You're the daydreamer. I nod, wait for some nasty comment. Instead, he grins golden. Cool, he says. That's when I know I found another cherry. Oh, another friend? <sighs> Yay. She made her first friend there. Switch. I use my sweet voice. Ask Mr. Spicer if I may please change my seat. I wonder who she wants to sit by. Any guesses? That's right. If you I think so, I think you might be right. Inside joke, I clench my toes around an imaginary tightrope, then leap into the safety net just in time to catch the question Mr. Spicer throws. Gabriella, do you know the answer? Sitting next to David, I slide as low as my chair will let me, whisper, sorry, and try not to notice Mr. Spicer shaking his head. A few minutes later, David passes me his notebook. I look down and see Mr. Spicer staring back at me, his hair a riot of red, green, and purple pencil. It's all I can do to keep from laughing out loud. Now, David likes to draw, but word of the wise, don't ever draw a picture of your teacher unless it's beautiful and you want it to be positive. Never draw a picture of an adult to make fun of him or her if you want to stay out of trouble and be kind. Maybe David needs to learn some lessons, too, about when it's appropriate to do his artwork. 
my new best friend. At recess, David and I swap cookies and secrets. He shows me his drawings. I point to one sketch of a clown. That's, the circus is my favorite place, I say. Mine too, says David. He turns to a blank page and starts sketching a lion tamer. Me? My thoughts trampoline to the big top. Stilts. Say stilts and I am Gabby the Great, a mystifying master juggler, rising high above the circus crowd, marching alongside the elephant, the elegant elephants, and anxious as anyone to watch the trapeze artist sail on air. Dragon. Say dragon and I raise my shield, fend off the fire of his mighty breath. Then when he's not looking, I scramble onto his back, grab a handful of scale, and ride him across the sky till the sun dives into the sea. Wow. So she had dragon stilts. She's getting used to this whole daydreaming idea again, isn't she? Camp dreams. The last snow just melted and already David is talking about going to camp. I asked mom if he can go too, if I can go too. Her no smacks me in the ear. We have to count our pennies, she says, maybe next year. I shrug, glad that the camp in my memory is free. Oh, sad. Tent. Say tent, and I run my fingers over the velvety moss near my sleeping bag, and I feel the cool night air ripple the hair on my arms, and I hear the cricket chorus while my cousins and I melt marshmallows and scarf down s'mores around a campfire, stuffing ourselves with gooey goodness under the stars. Planetarium. David's mom takes him on a trip to the planetarium. I know, because I get a go. We lean back in our seats, feel the dark wrap around us like Saturn's rings, and hold our breaths, staring up at a night sky speckled with starlight and bigger than all our dreams slung together. Can't wait to see what drawings David will do. Me, I gather new words like moon rocks, souvenirs I get to keep long after we leave. So if you're wondering what a planetarium is, it's where you go inside and they make it look all dark. And they, it's like a, sometimes it's a replica of the sky. And sometimes in big cities, you can actually, they have a big telescope that opens up and actually use a real telescope and see real stars. It's really cool in either case, I think. Comet, say comet and I am weightless playing ping pong with small planets, dodging asteroids and skipping through space in slow motion. Two skips and I'm on the moon. Two more and Mars is my playground. Teacher, poor Mr. Spicer, not sure what to do with this dream drawing duet. I remember, I think he's on her side. He was trying to inspire her to not give up daydreaming, just harness it and use it appropriately at the right time. I really think he's on her side, but right now I'm sure he's sighing and shaking his head, scratching it too. I hope she can figure this out. Practice, practice. I try to do what Mr. Spicer said, switch off my daydreams during class, save them for recess, but my thoughts have a mind of their own. Besides, the weather's getting warmer and the trees are whispering, and who can concentrate when the music of the ice cream truck is right outside the window? Firefly. Say firefly and I close my eyes. Watch one wink on and off and SOS to gather its brothers. Together we rise and pulse till I sweep them into a jelly jar. I tap the lid and grin at my summer nightlight. Sand. Say sand and I'm running along the beach, snatching up shells from my memory box. Dad right beside me. He oohs and ahs when I find a beauty and keeps his own eyes open for sand dollars. At the end of the afternoon, we trade treasures. I smile and blink myself back to the classroom. For once, I write down my daydream. I'll take that, says Mr. Spicer, snatching the memory right out of my hand. Oh, Gabby. She's writing during class, writing a note when she's writing it down when she's not supposed to. I don't know. I think maybe things have gone from bad to worse for her in school. Uh-oh, that's the name of the next title, the next page. I, David and I trade looks. I wait for my punishment. Mr. Spicer carries my paper to his desk, orders the class to open their workbooks while he reads in silence. A million moments later, he looks up at me with a smile. I quit holding my breath. 
but can't help wondering why he's not mad. The lunch bell rings before I can figure it out. He smiles? Did that totally surprise you? It surprises me. Two. So the first page was called one. She's numbering her pages now. Like, uh-oh, she numbered one. And then the next one, she's numbering two. The two lines are Roman numeral for two. David and I worry together over peanut butter and jelly. We share a cream-filled cookie, and I wish my half down... I wish my half down with a trickle of fear. Sorry, let me start this one over. David and I worry together over peanut butter and jelly. We share a cream filled cookie and I wash my half down with a trickle of fear and a cold carton of milk. A trickle of fear. I bet her stomach is in knots. Later. Mr. Spicer has, still hasn't mentioned a thing about my paper. Even so, I make sure to start the afternoon eyes fixed on the blackboard. I'm doing just fine till the numbers begin to spin and the chalk draws hopscotch lines on the sidewalk, inviting me to hop from box to box, balancing on one leg like a ballerina in sneakers, and Mr. Spicer doesn't even say a thing to stop me. Canyon. Say canyon, and I'm at the horizon's rim, leaning over a deep bowl of echoes. I gape at the Grand Cavern and call... Gabriella, then wait for the soft round sound of Ella, 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 as it returns. Idea. Gabriella, says Mr. Spicer, didn't you hear the bell? I come back from my travels. Sorry, I whisper, gathering my books to go. It's okay, he says. Before you go, I have something to show you. Remember this? He hands me the paper he'd taken from me earlier. Here it comes, I'm thinking, my punishment. I slide down in my seat, search for some way to disappear. This was your daydream, wasn't it? He asks. I nod, my tongue too tied to answer. It's wonderfully vivid, he says. In fact, it's given me an idea. I'll tell you all about it tomorrow. That's it for today. Go on home. I leave on giggly knees. Now what? I wonder what, since she's so talented with her daydreams and she's starting to write them down. What kind of job or career do you think that Gabriella would be wonderful at? At To put the at preposition before, I should say, at what career do you think she would perform wonderfully? So, did you say author? Poet or author? That's what I was thinking. Or she would be a filmmaker? Oh my goodness. Possibilities are endless. If she found a way, wrote, worked on her writing... Maybe I'm getting ahead of myself, though. Next page is announcement. The next morning, I race to school, my mind too full of questions to wander, to wander anywhere else. I bounce up and down in my seat while Mr. Spicer takes 10 times forever to call the roll. Then finally, class, says Mr. Spicer, starting tomorrow, we will stop what we're doing once a day and daydream for 15 minutes. Then write those daydreams down. David looks at me, his eyes wide as the moon. You'll never know when, though, continues Mr. Spicer, so you'll have to keep your eyes front and pay attention. Does that sound good? I swallow these words like honey, smile at their sweetness, and say, yes, my favorite word of all. Good night. When class lets out, I hurry home, hungry for dinner, and hoping to find more words with wings to dream and write about tomorrow. Home. I kick off my shoes. I kick my shoes off at the door, drop my books on the kitchen table, then hunt for snacks. Shoes in your room, please, says mom. I groan, but do exactly what she tells me. When I get back, she's reading my paper. The stupid page must have slipped from my notebook. I growl, then turn to leave until mom says, this is lovely, Gabriella. I wish I could write like you. What? I slice up mom's words and nibble on them. One at a time. When I find my voice again, I tell her all about Mr. Spicer's plan for our class. Good, she says, smoothing my paper like it's something precious. If this is a daydream, I don't want to know. Wow, sounds wonderful. It's here. Tomorrow arrives like a miracle. Even so, the class creeps by slowly as the night before Christmas. 
or should read it so the class creeps by as slow as the night before Christmas. I can't wait to open my notebook and jot down whatever daydream comes to me. I peek at David, who shrugs in answer to the question in my eyes. When? When? Finally, Mr. Spicer says, okay, class, workbook shut. It's daydream time. I'm telling you, I'm just about to cry. And I don't think those are sad tears. I think they're happy tears. All in. Four weeks have passed and my notebook is thick with daydreams. Funny how much better I'm doing in school. Somehow lessons don't seem half as boring. I'm not perfect, but I hear most of what Mr. Spicer teaches these days. Plus homework's easier now that my mind's not always meandering. There's one more thing that's new. My, my mom is starting to daydream too. Author, say Gabriella and mom sees me. Silver tipped pen in hand swirling best wishes across the front pages of dozens of books with my name, my name printed on them. I sign hundreds around the clock for a line of happy fans that stretch a city block. And there is mom beaming right beside me. Fair is fair. I never told mom I wanted to be a writer, but I'll let her keep her daydreams since she's finally letting me keep mine. Oh, I love this happy ending. And now the mom is so proud of her. Wow. And she gets to take time in school and daydream. So she gets to do it at home a lot, I'm sure, when she's done with her homework, if she has it or chores. But at school, what a plan there. Would you guys like that to get to daydream? Do you think you'd like to daydream? I think for some people it comes more easily than others. Do you ever get lost in your thoughts? Have you ever thought about writing down any of those ideas on paper in a journal or diary? And I've heard of a lot of authors, they do keep a journal and it doesn't have to be perfect at all, quite the opposite. They just write down thoughts and they never know when these thoughts might turn into ideas for their books. They just write down thoughts. They often don't worry about spelling, capitalization, punctuation. Now, I'm an, also an English teacher, and punctuation and spelling and capitalization are important, very important when you're writing a paper and working on a rough draft and then getting to a final draft. This is something different. This is just journaling their ideas. That might be something for you to consider. Maybe you already do it. I'd love to hear. Maybe you just have your thoughts. You like to write short stories, poems, jot them down. You can always go back later and look at them and polish them up. Hmm. It's working for Gabriella. I can totally see her becoming an author. The other thing I want to talk about, if you'd love to email me any of those thoughts, please do. Is this like the first book, Garvey's Choice, which is also by Nikki Grimes? So in that one, remember Garvey had, as at odds with his father, he wasn't bonding with his father. His mother, yes. His father, no. He thought his father wanted to push him into becoming uh, a sports hero, football player, and Gar but Garvey really loved his music. He learning he loved learning about outer space. Then he finally worked up the nerve to audition for choir. His dad heard him, and his dad was in a band, and they never bonded over that before. And his dad was so proud. So if you listen to that story, does this story remind you of it at all? I think definitely there are some things in common there. I think that she could bond with her dad in the story. Gabby could, but she had trouble bonding with her mom. Was she able to work that out? And so remember that her, the dad had pride in Garvey. Does the mom have pride in her? Am I missing some similarities, differences? What do you think? I would love to hear from you. And I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you have a great day, Greyhounds. And I can't wait to see you all soon. Bye-bye. See ya.